Whether you build models professionally or just as a hobby, one thing all model makers need is some kind of workspace, and I am no different. In this video, I show you how I built my brand new workbench and also discuss some other things about the channel. Greetings, fellow Earthlings, welcome back to Darling Burroughs Sci Fi Builds. Now, if you're a regular viewer to the channel, you'll probably recognize two things. Firstly, I've not posted a video in around about six months. And secondly, you probably won't recognize what's going on behind me. And I'm going to explain all of that in a moment. But first, I want to talk about my new workbench. When it came to building a new workbench, my idea was initially to go down the whole build it as cheaply as possible route. I'll be honest, it's my usual go-to method for doing anything. Having visited my local B&Q store here in the UK, my first port of call was the offcuts bin. I was pleasantly surprised to find a good range of wood available, plenty of potential wood that I could use. The best thing about offcuts bin is that all you need to do is make a small donation to a local charity and you can pretty much take as little or as much wood as you like. Looking through the offcut bin, I managed to source some fairly heavy duty looking offcuts, which I initially thought would make really good legs and struts for the bottom of the bench. My luck was in, as there were several pieces, all of very similar sizes. It might not have been perfect, but considering it was all pretty much free, I can't exactly complain. As well as long pieces of wood, I also had a collection of sheet material as well, which I planned on using for the top of the workbench. My plan was fairly simple. All I wanted to do was create a basic frame, which would include the legs and a cross beam, which would support the weight of the worktop. I had previously worked out the height that I wanted the worktop to be. So I started measuring both the width and the length of all the wood pieces so that I could cut them to size and create a frame where the worktop would be at the right height. As I didn't have any access to any power tools, I took all of the wood to my local hack space and used some of the equipment there. In an ideal world, my preference would have been to use a mitre or chop saw to cross cut the pieces I was going to use for the legs. Unfortunately, there wasn't one at the hack space I could use at the time so I decided to use the table saw and the crosscut sled instead. Whilst it wasn't an ideal solution, it certainly did the job. As the table legs were very, very thick and I could only raise the blades so high, I had to do it in several passes. And don't worry, I was very careful to keep my hands well away from the blade, even though it doesn't look it here. As the legs were made up of individual strips, rather than one piece of wood, I added some additional support with some extra screws to hold it all together. It was then time to repeat the process with the sheet materials, cutting them to the width of the workbench. Ideally, a larger table saw would have come in handy here, but I still managed to get the job done. Now, if you are doing any DIY or decorating or woodworking, anything that is going to get you messy, then I highly recommend do not wear your Sunday best clothes. So with that in mind, I've just put on some coverall old clothes that I do not mind if they get messy. I've used them for decorating, I've used them for painting, and if they get covered in sawdust or paint or grease, it doesn't really matter. Once all of the wood was cut down to length and the sheets were trimmed down to the width for the worktop, I carefully arranged the wood to create a mock-up of what the worktop would look like when it was finally assembled. Carefully, I tried it out and was fairly happy with how it looked. It was an ideal working height when I sat in a chair. Feeling quite happy with the progress so far, it wasn't until I got home that I'd realised I'd made a bit of an error in my plans. The problem was that in the kitchen area where I had planned to set up my new worktop, I actually had a radiator on the back wall, which I hadn't accounted for. 
problem wasn't that the worktop wasn't high enough to avoid the radiator. The issue was that I often use the radiator and I wanted to make sure that I had a big enough gap above the radiator to allow for the heat. I felt that if the radiator was on, while I had the desk right on top of it, then this could cause problems further down the line. The solution involved yet another trip to B&Q. However, this time, rather than trying to find offcuts in the offcuts bin, I actually decided to buy some wood instead. If I'm totally honest, I must admit I was never particularly happy creating a workbench using the offcuts I had. I wanted to make something that looked a little bit nicer, as it would be set up in the kitchen and would be on display, rather than in a shed hidden away where nobody would see it. I also felt that if I built it properly using quality materials, it would probably last a lot longer and appear more presentable when it appears in videos on the channel, a bit like my puppy Toby. When it came to constructing the new workbench, I started off by mocking up a workbench in my back garden, ironically using the offcuts that I'd used for the first version of the worktop. Unlike before, I actually managed to borrow a mitre saw from a friend of mine so I could cut the wood to length. Cheers Michael, thanks for the saw, appreciate it. I then started to measure the strips of 2x4 to create a frame underneath the new workbench. It was then time to start cutting the wood to size, starting with the cross braces. After making a few cuts, the blade on the saw actually came loose. Although it wasn't a safety concern, not gonna lie, I got very worried for a few seconds. Once I had changed my underpants and retightened the blade, I then finished cutting the cross braces before cutting the two longer pieces for the front and back of the workbench. It was then time to start assembling the frame that would go underneath the plywood checking that everything fit. Guess what? Remember folks, measure twice and cut once. What do you think of my measurements? Fortunately, the wood that I'd cut was actually too long, so I could still cut it back down. Unfortunately, the main issue I've got is it's currently 9pm and it's a bit too late to use the uh, electric saw because of the noise. I've got Nathan, my five year old, upstairs in bed. There's kids surrounding this area, they're probably all in bed, maybe some babies. And I think it's a little bit late to make too much noise for the sake of two cuts. to do it in the morning. However, just at this point, my neighbour started strimming their garden. So I thought, well, I'm not going to be any noisier than that, and I went for it. Well, if you can't beat them, join them. After trimming the long pieces down, I then started to assemble the frame which would support the top of the workbench, making sure that it was all aligned. Before I started to screw anything together, I first dry fitted the frame in place. Once I was happy, it was then time to start screwing the outside of the frame together. I created pilot holes before I screwed anything into place to prevent the wood from splitting. Once I finished this, I then checked that everything was straight by measuring corner to corner. Hello. 
Using some spare offcuts for measurements, I added the cross braces to the frame in equal distances from the edges, screwing them all into place as I went. The next stop was to screw the worktop down onto the frame. I laid the frame down flat before placing the plywood on top, making sure everything was squared and aligned. Again, I created pilot holes for the screws, as well as countersink holes, so screws went in flat against the top of the surface of the workbench. I followed the same process for screwing the plywood down into the center braces using pilot holes, countersinks, and then screws. Once the top of the workbench was completed, the next step was to build the legs and the cross braces to support them. I had decided that cross braces were to be attached under the legs, so set about cutting all of the pieces to size. Using the worktop as a reference to the size, I then set up the legs exactly how they would appear under the desk. To make it easier to install the legs, I first attached the cross braces to the uprights using a couple of screws per leg. It was then time to drill pilot holes into the frame, countersink the holes and bolt the legs on. Once the legs were finally attached, I then turned the desk back over with help from my girlfriend Sarah Thanks, babe. and put it in place, making sure that it fit into the gap I was planning on using. It was spot on. The length was ideal and there was enough height to clear the radiator. It also included space for storage underneath as well as on top of the desk. Absolutely perfect. Once I had finally checked that the bench was going to fit, it was then time to install some cross braces to help support the legs and keep them upright. I flipped the bench back onto its side before adding a long cross brace between the two legs running along the length of the bench. One last thing I wanted to do was add casters to the bench so I could easily move it if I needed to. Pretty solid. I found a set online which were extremely good value for money. The pack was absolutely brilliant and contained absolutely everything I needed, including all four casters, all the screws and washers, a screwdriver, and even a pair of gloves to prevent everything getting dirty. All four of the casters were fitted with a brake as well. And according to the instructions, which I didn't read, each caster could hold up to 150 pounds in weight. Before I installed them on the bench, I quickly did a test fit using a scrap piece of wood and found that not only was it incredibly easy to install, but it felt very fluid when I was moving around. I first placed the casters on the underneath of the desk, right below where the legs were, and marked a spot where I needed to drill the holes. It was then just a case of drilling four holes per caster, and then using the screws and washers supplied, I simply screwed the caster into the bottom of the workbench. Now I'll be honest, I didn't use the provided screwdriver, however, I'm sure it would have worked just as well. I then repeated the process with the other three casters and the bench was ready to roll out, quite literally. Now, I'll be honest, not only am I very impressed with these casters, they were very easy to fit, very, very uh, good value for money, and also the packaging and what you got with it was absolutely brilliant. Must admit, I'm very impressed with them, and I would highly recommend them, especially if you are looking to add 
kind of wheels to any kind of piece of furniture. Now what I'll do is I will set up an Amazon affiliate link and I will leave it in the description down below. If you do want to buy the casters then please use the link. Check it out. So the question is why have I got a new workbench? What happened to the old one? Why am I not still in the shed? And why have I not posted any videos for the last six months? And the answer to all of that is basically down to the fact that I've recently moved. And so unfortunately, my videos have had to take a back seat. Now that's not to say that I have abandoned the channel at all because I have decided to set up a proper dedicated space that I can use for working on all of my science fiction based models and filming them here for the channel. And I'll be honest, the uh, urge to get back into there is very strong right now, as you can imagine, especially with all the paint and all these bits behind me, which I'll discuss in a later video. I am going to be obviously working on the projects that I have not yet completed. Uh, for example, the airlock door diorama. There is still some work to do for it, unfortunately. There's also some repairs to do for it. It got a bit broken in storage. And also I will be continuing my ET ATV. I've also got a load of other projects that I have basically wanted to start and I'll be working on them. Obviously now I've got a bit of space. So don't give up with the channel. I am still going to be doing a lot of projects. So make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. As well as moving, I've also been doing some work behind the scenes, creating a series of 3D assets or greeblies that can be purchased and downloaded so you can use them on all of your science fiction related projects. I currently have over 60 individual greeblies available, which I have put into three packs, square panels, rectangular panels and circular panels or buttons. Each pack contains an assortment of assets in different formats, so you can edit them and then either 3D print them for physical models or import them into a 3D package and use them as digital assets as well. And you can use them for personal or commercial projects. Each asset pack is available separately, however, if you want access to all of the assets, you can purchase the bumper value box containing every asset in all three packs. All of these asset packs are available through my Buy Me A Coffee page. The link is down in the description below. But wait, there's more. If you want to save money on these asset packs, then sign up to become a member on my page as well. Not only will you get early access to any new videos I post on this channel, but you'll also get behind the scenes images and other information as well. On top of that, all of my members get discounts on any items that I sell in my Buy Me A Coffee page shop. If you don't want to become a member, that's fine. You can simply make a donation and all donations are very much appreciated and help towards materials, equipment and tools that are used to create projects for this channel. So after you watch this video, check out the link in the description and help support the channel. Cheers! So now that I've brought you up to speed, please just keep an eye out for some more videos. Obviously, I have just recently posted a Finding Greenblees video on the channel as well. Uh, in the meantime, there are quite a few playlists that I have started. Check them out. And in the meantime, hasta la vista. I'll be back.